Hello, Robert Bastian here to talk to you about capsaicin uh, used for sensory neuropathic cough and sensory neuropathic throat clearing. So uh, quickly to a video. Um, here's our subject. And first of all, why capsaicin? Well, we need about 10 different treatments for sensory neuropathic cough because not everything works for everybody. Uh, about 80% of people are going to respond to the first or second treatment, usually amitriptyline, desipramine, or gabapentin. But if those two things don't work, then we have to start working our way down a list uh, of other options. And capsaicin is not usually our first option. Uh, I say it's probably number four usually. It could be used as the first option if the patient prefers. And here you see a bottle of capsaicin. We get it uh, formulated by a nearby compounding pharmacy. And so you might ask, well, how is it used? Well, uh, by the way, if you need to read about this, this is a, an article that probably has a little bit more detail than what I'm going to give you. Um, you just go to Laryngopedia, type the word capsaicin here into the search window, and up it comes, this article. Click on this. And just below that article, by the way, is the major entry that's about sensory neuropathic cough. So there's a ton of information on that second entry as well. Well, how do we use capsaicin? It's got three potential benefits. Uh, the possible uses, the first one is as a cough reducer. The concept there, uh, just background, we are covered by skin on the outside. We are lined by mucosa on the inside. Uh, in our nose, mouth, throat, lungs, GI tract. Mucosa is what lines us. Well, in the mucosa is a neurotransmitter. You might have heard of epinephrine, norepinephrine, GABA, uh, serotonin, dopamine. Those are all neurotransmitters. Well, in the mucosa is one that's called substance P, and I don't know why it's called that, but that's what it's called, substance P. When we use capsaicin on a sustained basis, not from an individual use, but on a sustained basis, we gradually deplete substance P. And so uh, in some people, that seems to really reduce the cough. There are, there's a small subset in wh whom it really works quite well. Uh, so the other use is to cough reduce or cough aborter. There are a few people who say, I can tell the difference between a little tickle that's going to make me cough for a few seconds and a more urgent tickle that's, that is going to make me cough for two minutes and is going to be uh, major. And so if I have one of those urgent tickles, I have the, the capsaicin in front of me and I, I spray myself and it sort of aborts or it shortens that, that urgent feeling and, and I seem to get away with less of a cough. Um, and then the third option is People say, some of them who say it didn't really reduce my cough and it's not that useful as a cough aborter, but I have found that it's good as a cough scheduler. What is the idea of a cough scheduler? It's that I drive to church, still in the parking lot, I shoot, it makes me cough, I have quite an uproarious cough in the car before I go in, but then I seem to have an hour, hour and a half where I don't really cough. Uh, the idea is, uh, I don't know if you know what a rain shadow is, but warm air coming off the ocean as it rises next to the mountain range here, it cools and cool air holds less moisture and so it rains, it drops its moisture as rain. But then on the other side of the mountain, the air, th the warmed up air has no moisture in it and so now we get a desert. So we spray the capsaicin here in order to create rain it, and now we're free of rain for a period of time. Well, how is uh, the capsaicin used? Um, the way we use it is um, we teach the patient to get a mirror. They use a mirror and they teach themselves to aim uh, and to aim as far back in their mouth as they can. You don't really need it on your lips or your tip of your tongue. You need it as far back as you can get it. And it's especially useful, it seems like, when, when the tickle is higher, but it can be useful when the ticker, tickle is lower too. But the point is you want it in, as back, and so you teach yourself to aim. See how I'm kind of dropping my tongue and exposing the back wall of my throat, and that's where I'm trying to aim.
so I shoot myself with it and it's like whoo it's hot it's really quite hot and we just sort of swelter for five minutes no no food uh, for five minutes before or after so that we don't neutralize the capsaicin and we do that four times a day for three weeks to decide about the cough reducer the depletion of substance P um, now, just a creative idea. Some people are going to say, but how do I get this spray? You know, I don't live in Illinois. I live in England or in Belgium or wherever. Well, a creative idea. I'm not exactly recommending this, but uh, a woman in England wrote to me and she said this is what she did. She couldn't seem to get it compounded in the 0.03%. So she went to the grocery store, bought a bottle of cayenne pepper powder and she said what she did is she puts the distal this much of her finger in her mouth to wet it and then she dips it into the 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 cayenne pepper it adheres to the wet part of her finger and then she said she puts her finger as far back in her mouth as she can and and uh, that's how she delivers the capsaicin now, I don't have any idea whether that works as well as the spray does, but I mention it just in case uh, there's somebody who, who can't figure out a way to get the, the spray compounded. So that's the basic idea of how you're going to use capsaicin four times a day for three weeks to decide is it a cough reducer and then decide over time is it of any value to abort a, an attack in process or is it uh, good to help you get through church or get to the intermission of the play that you're attending and so forth. So an idea for you, I hope it helps and thank you for listening.